Thank you all very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, inspiring to see so many interested faces, uh, not only in this topic, but also on things of interest to the city of Portland. And uh, Susan and Bill, thank you so much. Thanks to the, uh, to the Portland City Club and also to George Beard at Portland State University for helping to arrange things. Um, I know you all are interested in sustainability, in the future of Portland, in uh, things urban, downtown renewal, getting those construction cranes out of the way and those tracks laid and uh, able to enjoy things. And I will, my remarks today are going to have only indirect reference uh, to uh, the kinds of renewal that you're seeing and living every day. My remarks have to do with how cities as corporate entities view themselves, view their role in the world, how that view has changed with globalization and other forces that are impinging on, uh, on city leaders. Uh, here's the program. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is that uh, it's not just sustainability that's at issue with uh, globalization. It's also that cities are on the rise. It's probably, cities are probably the only political economic unit on the planet that is increasing in power. While nation states, although of course uh, much more powerful in, in absolute terms, are, are in relative decline. They can't control those um, transnational corporations anymore as they once used to in tax terms and in trade terms. Next, I'd like to talk about nine things that you might not have known about cities in the developing world, and I hope to have some surprises anyway there. The main issue is about learning cities, and I think that this is the key thing uh, for the next 50 years is how well or how badly cities can see their future, learn about themselves, acquire some coherence of action and of vision to be able to move forward and act as a whole. Because my, my feeling is, from the 30 years experience that I've had, is that cities have already started along this path and are well along the way. I'm going to give some case illustrations from the city of Bilbao in Spain, the city of Curitiba, uh, perhaps you've heard of it, in Brazil, and your neighbor to the north, Seattle. And then talk a little bit about the opportunities that this might uh, present for Portland. Uh, first, the nine things. Here they are. It's not the numbers of people, it's the numbers of cities that uh, people don't pay attention to. And I'll show you what I mean. That cities are growing flatter, not fatter, flatter. They're spreading out all around the world. Uh, they're more poor. Fourth, uh, they have some interesting emerging health issues because of the way they're growing. Fifth, Asian cities are in total confusion, even though they're growing pell-mell, helter-skelter. Uh, you close your eyes one day and you see a high-rise the next. Lots of problems there. Portland has some answers for Asian cities. African cities are the fastest growing cities. Um, cities are the wealth of nations. Cities will drive the wealth of nations in the next 50 years, and this is an important uh, uh, feature to look at. Uh, that All that means that city leaders are in strong cross currents. Some pulling them back closer to participatory democracy, some pushing them out saying get engaged in the global world. Very difficult role uh, for mayors. And finally for all of these reasons cities are doing more learning. They're more interested in learning. What did I do with my watch? Oh I got it. I want to leave plenty of time for questions. So that's, that's by way of interview, by way of preview. So I said it was the number of cities. Here's what I mean. Uh, by 2020, there are going to be 1,000, seven or 800 uh, cities over 500,000 in population, 500 of them over a million in population around the globe. So we have 185 nations, but 500 cities that are plenty strong, that have plenty of capacity, that have plenty of appetite, and where all the economic activity takes place. So that's 